Hi all, this is Rex King again. When I was a child, I was presented with a book that had the title, The Truth That Leads to Eternal Life. And it was implied that this eternal life would be in paradise on earth. So the question is, is this a reality? Is this truth? Should we, well, should we have confidence that, that this statement is going to be fulfilled? That's the question. How, how do you know? How do you know for a fact without any... Well, that's what we're going to discuss in this, in this video. So please sit back and let's, uh, let's kind of think about what it really takes to know something for a fact and not be misled in, in some way, in some fallacy or whatever. What is paradise? Because it's implied right here. In other words, we want this eternal life because we're going to get paradise. So the question is, what is paradise? What is truth? So somebody says, yeah, I got paradise. You know, how, how can you know I can believe it? Or you know, this is how you get paradise. How, you, how can you believe it? What is logic? Well, we're going we're gonna to go through this whole uh, image and discuss all these points. What I'd like to do is start with this little image I put here in the middle. And basically, this is like uh, you right here in the center. Okay. Uh, and uh, you're... You're uh, spinning a life, your thoughts, spinning a life, okay? And it says, uh, we reap what we sow. We reap what we sow. So basically, in life, we, we're here, okay? I, I should have said we're here, not here. This is the center. This is the all. This is, this is the almighty, and everything spins around the almighty, and we're over here spinning around the almighty. And... Uh, and we reap what we sow. So depending on what we do in life, as we go through life, things happen from decisions we make. And it either turns out red or it turns out blue. In other words, our decisions have a result. Okay? And, uh, and that result is what we sow. We become what that. And so when we have this thought in mind right here, we reap what we sow, we reap what we sow, we reap what we sow. It is extremely important that when we think of this title, this statement, and the, the major premise behind it, in paradise on earth, you can, li uh, you can, you know, you can live uh, truth that leads, so knowledge that leads to the being able to live on earth forever. Okay, what, you know, how, that's some important knowledge. We got to make sure it's the right one. It's not some knowledge that somebody said that we have, but we don't really have it. In other words, I'm talking about in its accuracy. So let's make sure. So what is accurate knowledge and truth? That's the question, okay? Now that I've kind of beat all that together, let's, let's come over here and uh, ask the question. Let's ask the question. When can we assume it is truth or true? When it is reality. It's not just somebody making something up and uh, dreaming up a pipe dream you know, uh, trying to uh, to build a world that nobody else wants to live in, and he's trying to force them to fit into his mold, because that's really what it's about. You know, it's about uh, free will, you know, controlling our free will. And if we commit our free will to control other people's free will, and we get them to do what, what we want them to do, and it's not accurate, it's not based on, you know, our best interests, you know, and that's really what, what it's about, you know. What is in what is what is what is true? The truth that leads to eternal life is the truth that's going to lead to our best interests in the long term, because that's eternal life. So, what what is the truth that leads to our best interest in the long term? Okay. Well, well, first of all, this question about paradise. Okay, over here, I want to ask this question: Are there people living on Earth right now, today, in paradise? Isn't that an interesting question? You know. Here we're looking at this question over here. It says, the truth that leads to eternal life in paradise on earth. Okay. How would you know if you're there? Okay. What is paradise? Well, 
We need to, you know, what if there's people out there living in paradise right now? We don't even know it. Okay, we don't even know. Why? Because we don't understand what paradise really is. So the question is, what is paradise? Okay. Well, first of all, this idea about eternal life. Okay. Um. <clears throat> Or next is thought about eternal life. So if we're in paradise and we have eternal life, uh, how would we know it? You know, how would we know that we had eternal life? You know, because today we're in paradise, everything's grand. How do we know it's going to last forever? I mean, how do you know? I mean, this is this statement is really a powerful statement. You know. I mean, even if you're in paradise on earth today, how do you know it's guaranteed tomorrow as well? I mean, this is, and this is saying it's guaranteed forever. So, well, if, let's, come down, let's come down to this question right here then. What is eternal life? Okay, what is eternal life? So basically we've been saying that we, we want this, we want eternal life in paradise on earth, but what is eternal life? Okay, well, we know from physics, from reality, that there's something called conservation of energy. Okay, so E equals MC squared or something like that. The point being is that um, if, if all energy is conserved, okay, and we know that matter is energy and we're made of matter and we're in space and we're, we're, we're part of energy, then what this is saying is that we are eternal already. <laughs> we already have eternal life, you know. The question is, are we conscious of of how 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 can what sort of a continuance of our consciousness will will we have in other words we have an identity as a person on here on earth we call us souls each person is an individual soul okay and we're concerned about the identity of that soul so so really what we're talking about then when we come back to this question is the truth that leads to eternal life in paradise on earth for my individual soul and the other individual souls of other people in other words, the continuity of things, okay? Now, we know we reap what we sow, like we said earlier, we reap what we sow, and there's a conservation of energy, okay? And remember, Jesus talked about how uh, you love your neighbor, you know, the golden rule. Uh, love your brother like you love yourself, okay? You notice how we're all going around the all, we eat, we're all reaping what we sow. So what I'm, what I'm pointing out is this. I'm trying to do is I'm trying to expand your mind. Okay, Everything that I've been talking about so far up to this point pretty much has been sort of individual. You know, I read this. I This is how I think about it. My parent, my life forever. But now let's back up a little bit. I mean, what would, how could, could anybody possibly be in paradise if they're by themselves in the world? Even if they have their wife, just Adam and Eve, they say, on earth together by themselves, just beautiful, wonderful earth with everything in it, just them two. They're not reproducible. They're just, just them. You know, is that paradise? For humans, is that paradise? So if they need anything to eat, they got to go find it. You know, if they want any, you know, any variety, they have to be able to personally, you know, go find that variety. They have to be a beekeeper. They have to be able to milk the cow. They have to be able to... Butcher the cow if they want meat. They have to be able to raise any vegetable. I mean, this those two people, they'd be worked to death, always trying to, you know, for life to be a paradise, to have all the variety and interesting stuff. So, so in reality, if you think about it, when it's talking about paradise on earth, it has to be a collective, okay? So now let's back up and let's start looking at this as a collective, as the human family, like Adam and Eve was intended in the first place to do, produce to subdue and the earth and fill it with people, okay? So this is the result of what God's, or the, the Almighty, the All's purpose for mankind has been to have a world full of people like we have today. And uh, so when we look at it from that viewpoint, the truth that leads to eternal life in paradise on earth, okay? When you look at it from that viewpoint, it takes on a completely different meaning. Because now it's saying, hey, look, what is the truth that leads to the human family living in paradise on earth in unity, you know, eternally? 
because we, we're manifesting this and we have control over everything because we are in harmony with the Father. So all our decisions that we make, we're reaping what we sow so we can be confident and we, we, there's not, there's, there is nothing but the all. So we, you know, we, we, we have faith and undoubtedly it's knowing. We know we, yeah, we're, you know, we have it all. I mean, so, so what I'm trying to say is back up a little bit and recognize really what it's all about. Okay. What is paradise? Are, any, are there any people truly living on earth today that are in paradise? And the fact of the matter is, yes, a lot of people are living on paradise in earth, on earth in paradise right now. So the, the real question is, is why aren't you living in paradise on earth right now? Because there's a lot of people there already. Okay, many right now. Even though there's terrible things happening on the earth, they're in paradise because they accurately understand the truth that leads to eternal life in paradise on earth. And they know that it's going to be okay. Those people have to learn their lessons, have to go through whatever it takes to grow up. And then one day they're going to be here too in paradise. And until then, it's going to be awful. The worst things you can ever imagine. But we know that the conservation of energy and people reap what they sow. So those that are being innocently victimized, what does the Bible say? Bad, unforeseen occurrences happen to all, okay? So yeah, there's people that's being victimized today, but we can be confident that they're going to reap what they sow. In the long run, they're going to become back around some way or another in a consciousness that they will recognize as them, their identity, and be perfectly happy to, to, to live that life out. And that's really what we're talking about. You know, to, to truth that leads to eternal life on earth, in paradise on earth, means that the spirit that we are now, the individual that we are now, will have a sense of continuity and, and, and knowing that everything's going to be okay in the long run. And that if we do our best and live our best to... to uh, be the kind of person. Well, let's back. Let's just use the sheet. It says, "Being in good with our higher self." Being in good with our higher self. What does that mean? It says, "Being in good for one hundred percent real." In other words, you know for a fact that the relationship is is unbreakable. Being in good with our higher self. What is our higher self? Our higher self. Is what Jesus said, I and the Father are one. I and the Father are one. So being in touch, 100% in touch with your higher self, with your sense of knowing, your sense of this, this absolutely has to be right. This is the path I want to be on. And there's no doubt about it because it's good. It's good for me. It's good for everyone. It's paradise. It's true. How do I know it's true? Because it turns out good for everyone in the long run, it must be true. Okay, why? Because God is love. You reap what you sow. If everything is turning out good for everyone and we see that, then it must be true. What is logic? Logic is proving this. And what's the foundation behind it? The foundation behind it is that we're the one in charge. We manifest our life. We have free will. We have the power to reap what we sow because we have decided this is what is true. Okay? So the question is, what is true? Now, granted, we can decide anything is true, but is it really true? Is it based on reality? And that's where science comes in, you know, like, like the cons conservation of energy and Newton's three laws of motion. Well, it goes into, to, uh, then there's math. If you think of math, okay, the logic of things, okay. And then there's the logic of thinking. And when you thoroughly look at... The logic 
as to what it's going to take to make this happen on earth, it becomes very clear that destroying most of the people on earth and starting over is not the path to take. It's just not. The correct path is to teach all the people on earth right now so that we can act as one universal family what the truth that leads to eternal life is. You know, that's what we need to do. And what is that truth? The truth is we reap what we sow. So if we spend all our money building bombs and nuclear weapons and things like that and training people to do that kind of stuff, then inevitably, you know, we've created a world where people are in want because they spent all their money building bombs and they don't have what they need and people are unsatisfied. And, and before you know it, they add, they mad at each other and they use the weapons they built. They re reaped what they sowed, okay? Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that today we should stop having these, these things around. I mean, they're necessary because there's a transition that needs to go on, okay? And the transition is getting people to understand what the real truth is that leads to eternal life. And the real truth is we reap what we sow. And so if we want to have a paradise that we can live in, we have to plant it. Individually, we have to plant the garden that we want to live in, the paradise that we want. And if right now all we're doing is sitting around waiting on Jesus to come fix the world... We're not doing our part. We're not, we're, we're, we're reaping what we're sowing, but it's just us sitting around waiting for something to happen. The fact of the matter is the ball is in your park. It's in your side of the field, okay? It's in your lane. It's, it's being pitched to you and you need to hit the ball, okay? And the ball is your life. And if you don't, Take the time to swing because you're waiting on Jesus to come and fix it first. You're missing the boat because before you know it, you're going to be an old person dying, waiting on Jesus. And hopefully you had enough sense to have some sort of a semblance of a good life, have some children, and not be fooled into believing things that are unnecessary, that make life difficult, that make it impossible to plant things in your life that you can productively get something out of from because you've been blocked by so many unnecessary rules and restrictions in life because they're archaic and no longer necessary. The fact of the matter is truth is relative. It's, 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 it's a function of reality today. The consciousness of of what's going on today. I mean, think of us going back to the horse and buggy and getting rid of the, the vehicles that we have to get around today and the, the planes, the, the cars, you know, just, just the horse and buggy and, and railroads just getting started, okay? And we're going, we're, let's go back to that day, okay? I mean, are you willing to give it all up and say, oh yeah, I like this, I'm gonna live this way? Yeah, it might be nice for a while and nostalgic, but at the same time, you probably say, hey, look, it been it was nice to be able to, uh, to move and do so much more, to have much more experiences in life because I was able to, to accomplish so much more. I mean, each has their own temperament. I mean, somebody might like living in that environment and that's fine, they can do that. You can reap what you sow. But the point I'm getting at is that if you make everybody live in that state of mind because you think it's the best, <clears throat> you got a problem because a lot of people don't wanna still be in horse and buggy days. They like it today. They like the modern conveniences and they wanna have more of them. They want the world to continue to progress. And the fact of the matter is they're in paradise because they're living their life to the best of their dreams. They're not waiting on somebody else to fix it for them. They're not looking to somebody else to have some uh, uh, for their approval to live like a Pope or a, or a governing body or a, any other group of people that take on some semblance of authority to say, if you listen to me, I'll be able to take you to paradise on earth. I mean, if, you, if that's the path you want to take, then keep it. Like I said, if you want to live in horse and buggy days, okay, and you want to sit around and wait on Jesus and, until somebody comes and, uh, and, and fixes it for you, then you can live that life. But it's not necessary. You can go into paradise right now. 
You just have to want it. You just have to you know, say, yeah, I want paradise. How do I get it? What is it, what is, what is it that I desire in my life? What is my dreams? And start doing your best to make it happen. You reap what you sow. And you might say, well, I'm the most God on the awful, ugly person there is. And that's fine. You know, I'm talking about on outward appearance and maybe on the inside too. I'm the God of, uh, you know, nobody would ever want to be around me. And I'd love to have a wife, you know, but man, I'm just, well, I assure you, if you do your best to, to become the best person you possibly can on the inside, okay? And then what's going to happen is that ugliness you got on the outside is going to blossom like a, a, an unusual looking flower, you know, some sort of an orchid or something. To where from up close, you'd say, what in the world could this be? But when you back up and you take a real look and get to know them, you realize they're just a gorgeous flower. And you know what? There's going to be a gorgeous female flower out there that you're going to match up with. And if she's been developing herself to be the character inside, to be a good woman for a man like you, then uh, guess what, man? It all comes together. You reap what you sow. In other words, the world is a the world is a conservation of energy. It's all here. So within this package, it's constantly fulfilling its own desires. I mean, that's the purpose of it all. I mean, you reap what you sow. If you reap what you sow, then that means this system, the world, is constantly wanting to fulfill its own desires. And you and I are in a position where we can actually be conscious of that and in our consciousness plan the world we want to live in, the paradise we want, okay, and plot the path to it, you know, an accurate path that, you know, that we know is based on sound reasoning and so forth. Use logic, okay, because we're going to reap what we sow, so we want to make sure that that it's, it's based on reality, what, what we can actually make happen one step at a time. A good way to think about reality is this, okay? If you were going up a, a ladder to get on another level, okay? Uh, if you want to get on, let me back up. If you want to get on to another level, you get a ladder. So you put the ladder there. So you'd sit it there and say so you would touch the bottom of the ladder. And then all of a sudden you would jump up to the top rung and get on the roof or get on that higher side. No, no, that's not how it works. To get to the top of the ladder, you say, okay, how do I get up there? One rung at a time, one, one step at a time. One, well, that's what's been happening over the last centuries. One step at a time, mankind has been going from Adam and Eve, complete ignorance, to knowledge of what it takes to have eternal life in paradise on earth for the human family, the complete human family. That's what God's purpose has been for the last 6,000 plus years from the viewpoint of the Bible. You know, Adam and Eve was put on the earth raw and they were said, subdue the earth, you know, make it, you know, you know, it's become the human family and then at some point, you know, it would end and you would overcome ignorance and become mature to the point where mankind would be able to live a balanced life on earth in paradise. Why? Because everyone is doing the best they can in their personal lives to make it the best they can because that's they, they know how. They're mature to that point. They teach their children the same. In other words, every community is... Is, is, is spending their resources in the best. Every nation is spending their resources in, in the best. And, I mean, the result is the world is, is reaping what it sowed. So it's real, it's real straightforward. So, so, I mean, really, the, the part about it all this is, is, yeah, you talk about eternal life, but I only live so long, okay? But that's relative thinking. It really is. If we reap what we sow, well, look around. I mean, we... we uh, we grow plants, and then we eat them. We, uh, we grow animals. I mean, some of them we eat, or some of them we enjoy. You know, we have as pets, and we, li we live our lives with them, though. Um, and then, you know, and, and, then, and then the next year, we, we plant another garden, you know, and we start over. And uh, the same exact vegetables and so forth and fruits that we grew last year, we grow again and we enjoy them just as much as we enjoyed them last year. Just because they're the exact same. You know it. They're, you know that, I mean, it, it was a strawberry is a strawberry. And it's going to be sort of the way I think we're going to appreciate over time as mankind matures more is that that's what we are. 
you know, we're the human family. We're all one human family. Our consciousness is blended. And we as individuals pull out the parts that we want, but it's just one human universal family. We know that because with Adam and Eve, the consciousness of mankind was empty. And since then, it's been filled up. What, with what all of the consciousnesses and all the experiences of mankind up till now. That's our, that's our collective consciousness. And depending on how much you tap that consciousness and how you tap it, you can put yourself into a paradise by following a path of life that leads to that. I've done some other videos that clearly make it apparent to, to those that, that uh, you know, take the time to... to uh, to you know, to, to to see the logic in it, that it's you know it's the way to go. And, and I guess what I'm trying to say is this, and it comes back to another Bible scripture. It says the day of one's death is better than the day of one's birth. And if you think of that simple statement in in with the intent of this thought about you reap what you sow, then what what that tells me is that. Well, even Jesus said it too. It says, unless a seed is planted and dies, it can't become another plant and it can't grow and prosper. And he was talking about himself. And so, I mean, that's what we are. We're, we're seeds that are growing and developing and, and, and maturing and, be, and, 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 and picking up attributes and qualities that, that hopefully improve us so that whenever the next thing for us happens, you know, conservation and energy, something's going to happen to the consciousness, to this identity that we have created because it's so valuable. We know it's valuable because, you know, we care about it as an individual. And we, if we are part of the all, then it's important. And so what I'm, what I'm trying to say is, is if you, you reap what you sow, and so what you put into your development personally is what you're going to get out of it. So if you want to live in paradise, you can. You know, but you need to make sure that you base it on reality. You know, one step at a time, up the rungs. You know, what do I have to do next, next, next? And who knows, you know, your, your paradise may not come in this lifetime. It might be you're going to be recycled a couple of times before you actually get it, okay? But the point is, is that the, the best you can do now the, be the, the best you can develop yourself, your character, your personality, your, your, uh, your, all of the qualities that make the best in a, in a person, depending on, you know, who they want to be. And what I mean by that is some people want to be carpenters and some people want to be electricians. And it's hard to be focused on both of those and be experts at, at the same time. You can do one for a while and then do another one for a while, but to do them both at the same time, even if you're building a house, you'd frame it up first and then you'd come back and do the electrical next. You wouldn't do them simultaneously other than setting up things that make it convenient in the future, planning ahead, organizing. Again, I'm trying to, I'm trying to help you to appreciate that logic really doesn't fail. You know, we have to use logic and recognize what's really happening on earth today. It's not about our personal little paradise. It's about the collective paradise. That's what's happening. On earth today, there's many people in that paradise already. Think of it like a, you know, let me just, let me just draw one. Think of it like an arrow. Some people are over here and some people are back here. Okay. Now, yeah, they're, are they going to get into paradise? Well, yeah, well, they're going to get there one day, but some people are there already. Well, the only reason why these people aren't there yet is because they, they haven't come to recognize it, that they can come sit up on the cone, too, if they want, but they just don't know it yet. And that's what I'm trying to say is, is um, look, I, I believed in Jesus all my life. I still believe in Jesus, but people don't understand him for what it really is, and that's what I'm trying to see or say is or for you to or to help you to see is that Jesus is being the best person you can be. And if you're waiting on Jesus to come help you to be the best person you're going to be, you're going to have a problem because you're never going to become the best person you're going to be waiting for Jesus to come help you to best be. You understand the false logic in it? <laughs> logic? Logically, if we were put on this earth to live our lives, we need to do our best to make ourselves the best we can be. Now, 
If you think that just sitting around waiting on Jesus is going to do it for you, then do that. Okay, but I don't think it's the best thing personally, and I'm not going to do it anymore. Okay, I spent many years of my life waiting on Jesus, and I know how to get out of this hole now. And this hole is is you reap what you sow. You know, just focus on the few things that Jesus really said. You reap what you sow. You're a seed developing, and so if we're a seed developing and we reap what we sow. And we're becoming the best whatever we want to become now, even if we die in this lifetime, before we actually achieve it, we're going to reap what we sow. I'm going to end it there. We're at 30 minutes. Thank you very much for listening and watching. Hopefully you've got something out of my rambling through this. Um, I did this on purpose. I wanted to, to just sort of help people to understand how just to let, let, let this, their thoughts flow through these things and Go from one to the other until finally you can piece it together and recognize the truth, the logic in it. Thank you and hope to see you in another video.